Welcome, and thank you for entrusting the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health with your surgery. We believe the best patient is an informed patient. The following information will prepare you for surgery and knowing what to expect before, during, and after the procedure. As you get ready for surgery, use this checklist as a guide to help navigate what testing and clearance are needed. You should also receive paperwork from your surgeon's office. Finding and setting up someone to be your care partner before surgery is an important step. This person will help you with your recovery goals. If you are already working with physical therapy, continue as recommended. If you do not have an exercise routine, it is a good idea to speak with a member of your surgical team before starting any exercise. Your nutrition plays a vital role in helping to improve how well your body recovers after surgery. From as early as one month before surgery, you will want to increase how much protein you eat each day. For some, you may only have a couple of weeks or even a few days before surgery. Whatever time you have leading up to surgery, it is essential to boost your nutrition. If you use any tobacco products, please speak with your primary care physician about quitting. Nicotine can significantly increase your risk for poor wound healing, which can lead to infection. If your surgery includes a spinal fusion, there is a significant increase in the bone's failure to fuse. There are a few things you can do to help set up your home for success. Clear open paths by removing anything from the floors that could cause you to slip or trip. Keep frequently used items near you and at waist level so you don't have to bend low or reach high to get anything. Add firm pillows to low chairs and raising the toilet seat surface will help you get up and down easier. And having meals already prepared will aid in your recovery. There are only a few items you should bring to the hospital. These include a list of all current medications with the dosage and how often you take them. Include a list of any allergies you may have, your photo ID and insurance card, a copy of your advance directive or living will. If you do not have one, we can provide you with the information when you come to the hospital, a hard copy of any imaging studies like a CT scan or MRI, comfortable hard sole shoes and loose fitting clothing. If your surgery requires you to spend the night, we will provide essential toiletry items. You are welcome to bring any additional items you may need. Please keep any valuables at home. As you prepare the day before surgery, we strongly recommend washing with a chlorhexidine solution called HibaCleanse. You will shower with this germ-killing treatment three times, the morning before your surgery, the night before your surgery, and the morning of your surgery. We have you wash with this solution to help reduce your risk of infection after surgery. We all carry normal skin bacteria on our bodies. This germ-killing treatment will help reduce the amount of that bacteria. In doing so, this greatly helps to reduce your risk for an infection after surgery. On the next slide, you will find the directions for how to wash with the solution. We also recommend that you avoid shaving around the area of your surgical site at least five days before surgery. 
Shaving can cause little nicks in the skin that would allow bacteria to enter the body and possibly cause an infection. On this slide, you can review the step-by-step -step instructions for washing with the HibaCleanse solution. You can also find this information in the booklet that the surgeon's office gave you at your pre-op appointment. It is very important not to use the solution on your hair or face. Another way to help reduce your risk for infection after surgery is applying the mupirocin ointment to both nostrils twice a day for five days before your surgery. This ointment is a prescription medication that a surgical team member will call into your pharmacy or provide you with a paper prescription. A common germ called Staphylococcus can be found in the nostrils. Using the mupirocin ointment will help reduce the germs, which help reduce the risk of infection. You should apply a small amount of the ointment on the inside front part of each nostril and then gently press the nostrils together to help spread the ointment. The directions are also in the booklet you should have received from your surgical team. Adding additional carbohydrates before surgery can help with your recovery. They help your body handle the stress of surgery. It lowers your discomfort before surgery by reducing hunger, thirst, and anxiety, and possibly, most importantly, reducing the risk of nausea and vomiting after surgery. If you do not have a history of diabetes, you should drink 10 ounces of a clear carbohydrate beverage like Gatorade or Powerade at bedtime. Drink the same liquid up to two hours before your surgery. If you have a history of diabetes, you need to speak to your surgical team about what type of beverage and the timing of when to stop drinking the beverage. If you are insulin dependent, you will need to talk to your medical provider about the amount of insulin necessary before surgery. In addition to the carbohydrate beverage, you will be allowed to drink clear liquids up to two hours before surgery. If you have regular nausea, diabetes, stomach issues, or swallowing difficulties, you will need to stop drinking the clear liquids four hours before surgery. Clear liquids are beverages you can see through. Some examples are listed below. The morning of your surgery, you will come to the Shirley and Ralph Klein Ambulatory Care Center. This entrance is directly across from the parking garage. You will need to arrive two hours before your surgery start time. The process begins with registration. They will copy your photo ID and insurance card and verify all your information is up to date in our system. Following registration, the nursing staff will call you back. You will be asked to get into a hospital gown. An IV line will be started, and together you will review your medications and past medical surgical history. During the pre-operative phase, when the staff gets you ready for surgery, you will have a final opportunity to speak with a surgical team member to answer any last-minute questions or concerns. You will also meet with a member of the anesthesia team. The anesthesia team will go over what they will be doing and who will be in the operating room with you. You will receive general anesthesia, which will put you to sleep during surgery. If you have had any issues with anesthesia in the past, please make sure to tell a member of the anesthesia team. After your surgery, we will bring you to the PACU. This stands for Post-Anesthesia Care Unit, also known as the Recovery Room. 
Your nurse will be monitoring your vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, and managing any pain you may be experiencing with medications. If you are planned for same-day surgery, once you are more awake, pain is managed with medication by mouth and you're drinking some liquids, you will be cleared for discharge home. At that time, the nurse will review your discharge instructions with you and your visitor. If you are scheduled for an extended recovery or admission to the hospital, we will bring you to your room after you have recovered in the PACU. The nursing staff will review the call bell, bed controls, and how to order your meals. The nursing staff will also continue to monitor your vital signs, heart rate, temperature, and blood pressure. They will help manage your pain with medications, ice and heat, and maintain medical equipment. On average, most patients are discharged from the hospital after one or two nights. Your length of stay is determined by the type of procedure you had and how well you are recovering after surgery. To discharge home from the hospital, we want you to be eating well, managing pain with medications by mouth, having a stable exam by a member of your surgical team, and the incision to be healing well. Some patients may have a drain, and the drain's output will need to slow before that is removed. All drains are removed before discharge, and some patients may need a post-operative x-ray before leaving the hospital. This x-ray is determined by the type of surgery you had. The goal is to make you as comfortable as possible, but know that you will have some pain following surgery. You will be asked throughout your time in the hospital to use the 0 to 10 pain scale. 0 means no pain, and 10 means the worst possible pain you can imagine. Using this scale helps the nursing staff and surgical team to help manage your pain. Following your surgery, we use a multimodal drug approach. This approach means we use different types of medication to help manage your pain after surgery. Your surgical team will order Tylenol, a muscle relaxer, and a narcotic pain medication. Tylenol will be used for mild to moderate pain. The muscle relaxer will work best for any tightness and stiffness. The narcotic pain medication is used for more severe surgical incisional pain or pain not relieved by the other two medications. The goal is to keep your pain at a tolerable level. This goal includes moving with less difficulty, getting in and out of bed, working with physical therapy if needed, and having restful periods. There are potential side effects to some of the medications you may use to help manage your pain. If you experience any itching, constipation, nausea, vomiting, or feeling overly sleepy, please let the nursing staff know. A member of your surgical team may want to switch you to a different medication. In addition to using pain medications, you can use other forms of therapy to help manage pain. For example, ice, therapeutic breathing, meditation, guided imagery, aromatherapy, or other activities like coloring or word searches. You will also need rest periods throughout the day. Applying ice and heat can also help with pain management. Ice is to be applied over the surgical incision. The ice will help with swelling, and that, in turn, can help ease the pain. The heat you can use on muscles that feel tight or stiff. You cannot put heat directly over the incision because the heat helps increase blood flow to those muscles, which allows them not to feel so tight and tense. Still, the increase in blood flow could cause the incision to bleed. You will want to keep the ice and heat on for 20 to 30 minutes at a time and then remove the ice or heat for 20 to 30 minutes. You can repeat this cycle as frequently as every hour. 
Also, make sure you have clothing or a towel between you and the heat or ice. If you are admitted into the hospital, you will see this device. Most patients after surgery tend to take a shorter, shallower breath, not allowing the lung cells to open completely. This shallow breathing can lead to fluid or bacteria collecting in the lung, leading to an infection such as pneumonia. The nursing staff will instruct you on how to use the incentive spirometer. The goal is to take 10 deep breaths every hour if you are awake. If you have any difficulty using the device, as long as you take in nice deep breaths and fill up your lungs with oxygen, you will accomplish the goal. Another device you will see while you are in the hospital is the sequential compression device, or SCD. One of the risks of surgery is developing a blood clot. The compression device helps pump the blood flow from your feet and legs back up to your heart, reducing your risk of developing a blood clot. This risk is one reason we also encourage you to get up and walk as soon as possible because walking increases the blood flow in your legs. You can also do foot or ankle pumps like pushing down on a gas pedal and then pulling the toes up towards your shin. Some patients who are at higher risk of developing a blood clot may be prescribed a blood thinner. Those patients who were already on a blood thinner will be told when to resume that medication. Some patients may also have a drain after surgery to remove any excess fluid from the surgical site. The most common drains used are the Hemavac, pictured on the left, and a JP or Blake drain, shown on the right. Your surgeon will decide if a drain is needed. All drains are removed before leaving the hospital. Early ambulation or walking as soon as tolerated is critical for a successful recovery. Unless otherwise ordered by the surgical team, you can get up with nursing staff that afternoon or evening of your surgery. If you spend the night and therapy is ordered, you will see them the day after your surgery. The more you can be up and mobile, the looser and warmer your muscles will be and the better you will start to feel. If you are undergoing lower back surgery, in this slide, you will find a few exercises you can do afterward to help strengthen your muscles. Just know that it is normal to have back and nerve pain following surgery. These symptoms will gradually improve over the next few weeks to months, depending on how well you heal. If your surgeon has ordered a brace, instructions on what type and when to wear it will be provided to you after surgery. If you are undergoing neck surgery, in this slide you will find a few exercises you can do afterward to help strengthen your muscles. It is normal to have pain in the back of the neck and shoulders and nerve pain following surgery. These symptoms will gradually improve over the next few weeks to months, depending on how well you heal. Some patients can experience a sore throat after neck surgery. You can use a chloroseptic spray or throat lozenges to help ease the discomfort. Most patients find cold feels better going down, so eating a popsicle, Italian ice, or ice cream may also help. Additionally, some patients can experience some difficulty with swallowing after surgery. Typically, a good idea to start with liquids and soft foods. When those feel like they are going down okay, you can advance your diet to solid foods. You may find chewing a little longer than you normally would for the first few times after surgery can help make sure things are going down okay and nothing feels like it's getting stuck. If your surgeon has ordered a brace for you, instructions on what type of brace and when to wear it will be provided to you after surgery. A 
As you prepare to leave the hospital, the surgical team will put together discharge instructions and provide you with prescriptions. Ensure you have discussed your pain management and discharge plan with a member of your surgical team before leaving. If you haven't already done so, make your follow-up appointment to see your surgeon. Also, make sure you have all the needed information and equipment to go home with. For example, your outpatient therapy script, the home health company name and number, and a brace or walker as it applies to you. After surgery, your best form of exercise will be walking. We encourage you to take several short walks throughout the day. Rest periods are essential, but note that sitting or lying in one spot, especially for too long, can cause the muscles tightness and stiffness, increasing your pain. While you are awake, about every hour at a minimum, make sure you are shifting your weight, changing your position, and getting up as much as possible. The more you are up moving, keeping your muscles warm and loose, the better you will start to feel. If you have had cervical or neck surgery, you can begin to move your neck slowly, side to side, left to right, kind of like a slow nod no. This movement will help stretch out the neck muscles, helping with any tightness and tension you are feeling and regaining your normal neck movements. Sexual activity can be resumed when you feel comfortable. You will be able to drive when you are off of post-operative narcotic pain medication and you feel comfortable reacting to the road. Typically, it is a good idea to first drive around in your neighborhood or an empty parking lot. There are not many restrictions following surgery. Your surgical team will want you to avoid heavy lifting, which includes anything that will cause you to strain to lift or pick up. You will also want to avoid repetitive movements, awkward positions, and reach out to grasp or lift objects. If you have stairs to get up or down, be sure to go slowly, and if there is a rail, hold on to it. You may also find using the log roll technique is helpful to get in and out of bed. It will help take some of the pressure off of your core muscles by using your arms. For most patients, getting up and getting down is the hardest part. Typically, once patients are up and walking, they feel pretty good. Before you leave the hospital, typically, you will have a waterproof bandage in place. This bandage will allow you to shower within 24 to 48 hours after surgery. While you are in the shower, just let the warm, soapy water trickle over the surgical site. No forceful scrubbing. When you get out of the shower, you want to make sure that you gently pat the surgical site dry. The reason to keep the surgical site as dry as possible is that bacteria like wet, moist environments. The drier you keep the surgical site while it is healing, the less risk of infection. It is normal to have some clear pink or red drainage from the surgical site. You will want to make sure you keep the incision covered while it is draining. Typically, surgeries performed to the front of the neck are closed with a liquid bandage called Dermabond, basically like glue. Over the top of the Dermabond, you will have Steri-strips. Typically, it takes about two weeks for them to fall off. You will want to let them fall off on their own. If you try peeling them off before two weeks, you could open up the incision. When the Steri strips start to peel away, you can use scissors to help trim them up so they do not get caught on clothing. In most other surgeries, the surgical team will use staples to close. You will follow up in the surgeon's office to remove the staples between two to three weeks after surgery. Do not put any creams, ointments, or medications on your incision for six weeks after surgery or as discussed with a member of your surgical team, and no soaking, baths, swimming, or hot tubs for three weeks after surgery. After surgery, your nutrition also plays an essential role in your healing process, and protein is a key nutrient. You may also find eating smaller, more frequent meals, like four to six smaller meals per day, is a little easier on your stomach. It is also a good idea to make sure you eat something before taking the narcotic medication, which can help reduce the risk of nausea and vomiting. 
As mentioned earlier, for cervical or neck surgeries, you may find swallowing is a little difficult. If you find that you are not getting enough calories or protein, you can always supplement with a smoothie or shake. Over-the-counter items like Boost, Ensure, Glucerna, if diabetic, are great options. You will want to keep track of your bowel movements after surgery because one of the most common side effects is constipation caused by anesthesia and narcotic pain medication. Typically in the hospital, we will start you on some form of stimulant laxative. Still, it is essential to continue at home, especially if you are using narcotic pain medication. Once you have stopped using the narcotic or resumed your regular bowel pattern, you can pull back on the laxatives. Anything over the counter will work. Also, keeping yourself well hydrated and eating high-fiber foods can help. Listed in this slide are a few tips and tricks for when you get home in the kitchen. Listed in this slide are a few tips and tricks for when you get home in the bathroom. Vital signs and symptoms of when to call your surgeon's office are Increased bright redness Swelling or foul-smelling drainage coming from the incision The opening of the incision A temperature greater than 101.5 Fahrenheit or chills New or worsening pain or weakness Note that numbness and tingling that comes and goes may be normal Leg swelling Especially in just one leg Pain in your calf or shortness of breath loss of bowel or bladder control or burning with urination, or numbness in your groin or genital area. And if you have had cervical or neck surgery, a change in your voice, high pitch, squeaky voice, increased swelling in the neck or difficult breathing. We hope you have found this presentation helpful and feel a little more prepared for what to expect leading up to surgery while you're in the hospital and when you are discharged home. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact Kristen DiMartino, our Spine Center Coordinator, at 443-643-1212. Additionally, you can always contact your surgeon's office with any questions or concerns. Thank you for your time and choosing the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health System for your spine surgery.